If you want to have some fun in chess, then do try this black bun shielding gambit. And for that, you will have to play with the black pieces. So, the game starts with e4 and you reply with e5 and white might attack your pawn with knight to f3 and you defend with knight to c6 and now white might play bishop to c4 which is a very common move trying to aim at your weak f7 pawn. And now if you want to try the black pawn shielding gambit then you will play a very tricky move knight to d4 allowing white to capture this free pawn over here. If white gets greedy and captures this pawn well then he has fallen into your trap because now you will play the strong move queen to g5. But since white has a double attack on the f7, he would mostly be tempted to capture on f7 with his knight, thinking that now he is forking black's queen as well as the trapped rook over here. But that quickly loses the game because black can now play the crushing queen takes g2, forking white's pieces one more time. And now here there are two ways that white can respond to. Either he can capture this rook over here or he can defend his rook by moving it to the f1 square. Let's see what happens if he tries to defend his rook. So if white plays rook to f1, then you will capture the pawn on e4 with a check. If white blocks the check with his queen, then he will lose his queen obviously. And after this exchange of pieces, white is down in material by a total of 9 points and this should be an easy win for black. Let's go back. So therefore, White might make the mistake of blocking this check with his bishop. But that move quickly loses the game to knight f3 smothered mate. Let's go back a few moves and see what happens if white decides to capture our rook instead of defending his rook. So he's definitely thinking that hey, if you want to capture my rook, you can because even I'm capturing your rook. So if he plays with that level of thinking, then you can again trap him. Let's see how. So if white plays, knight takes rook, then you capture his rook with a check. And now the king can move to this square. So he's forced to block the check with his bishop. And now you'll capture the pawn on e4 with a check. If white blocks the check with his queen, then obviously he will go down in material. And after all of these moves, white will quickly lose the game. So now here you can play d6, trying to open up the lines for your bishop so that you can have a double attack on this pinned bishop over here. White can do anything to save his bishop, so he has to focus on activating his pieces. So he might just play a move like d6, trying to open up lines for his pieces. And now bishop h3, double attacking the pinned piece over here. Bishop to e3 and now white loses his bishop with the check and king moves to d2 and here at this point of time white is down in material by a total of 9 points. And don't forget about this trapped knight over here because he can come to any of these squares because if he does he's gonna get killed. So this situation is an easy win for black. Let's go back. So here in this situation, instead of blocking this check with the queen, if white blocks the check with his bishop, then he will soon get mated. Because now you can bring another piece into this attack and that is your dark squared bishop. So you can play bishop to c5, trying to target this weak f2 pawn over here. And also laying a checkmate trap on white's king. Now here it doesn't really matter what white tries to play, whether he tries to give up his knight over here or attacks your queen with the move d3 or attacks this knight with the move c3. It doesn't matter what white plays because white is soon getting mated. Let's see how. So white tries to give up his knight with the move knight to f7 but you're not gonna waste your time in capturing this knight because you're gonna start attacking this white king with the move knight f3 check king moves to f1 and now you'll play the crushing queen h4 threatening to checkmate on the f2 square white can't save this he will just simply try to waste your time with the move like knight to d6 check you capture back the knight and now since white is getting made it over here he moves his king to the g2 square but now you'll capture the pawn with a check if king moves to h1, then queen takes h2 is a checkmate already. Therefore, he will move his king to the h3 square. But now you'll take the h2 pawn anyway with a check. King moves to g4 and now bringing out another piece to this checkmate attack and that is knight f6 check. If king takes knight, then queen f2 is a checkmate. And if king moves to f5, then queen e5 is a checkmate. Do like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed learning this gambit. So what is the best move for black over here? Let me know your answers in the comments box and do not forget to join the channel's membership program.